By day, there are three kids at camp. But also by day, there are three podcasters at camp. Creating a podcast that will change the world, or at least make you laugh and make you think for the next 20 minutes or so. It's going to be epic, epic. Hello, Camp Sababa, and welcome to the latest, greatest, Share with your maidest podcast where kids run the show that other kids can't wait to hear. I'm your host, Alana, and to my left... It's me, your second host, Eli, and to my left... ...is an empty chair. Hey, aren't we supposed to have a third host on this show? You're right, Eli. There seems to be a shower-shaped hole in our podcast crew. Maybe she got carried away getting ready for Jerusalem Day. It's one of my favorite days at camp. We divide the camp into quarters, like the quarters of the old city, and... Wait, maybe she was whisked away by Mud Boy, the camp golem. You know there's no such thing as the Mud Boy. Is there? Besides, a golem is supposed to defend Jewish people, not disappear them. You guys, you'll never believe it. I do believe it. Mud Boy is real. How did you escape from his muddy clutches? What? No, Mud Boy isn't real, is he? No, never mind that. This is way more exciting. I was on my way here to the podcast studio, and I passed by the kids from Cabin 31 who were getting ready for Jerusalem Day by turning their space into the City of David, one of the most important archaeological sites in the city. Oh yeah, they're building the cool replica gate next to the cabin. I hear they're going to plant a big tree there when it's over. Right, so they're digging this hole in the ground, and they're shoveling and shoveling, and then suddenly, clunk, 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 clunk. They found something underground. It could be anything. Maybe it's buried treasure. Treasure, treasure, treasure. It'll probably end up being some trash left behind by some old campers who didn't appreciate the value of recycling. But if we're lucky, it'll be something left behind from before there was even a camp here at all. Well, lucky for us, there's probably someone over at Cabin 31 who can shine a little light on this mystery. Let's send Sam, our roving reporter. You know how they love running across camp just to talk about dirt. And while we wait for Sam to get in place, let's dig into (laughs) today's two truths and a lie. Eli, will you do the honours? Happy to. Introducing Ariel. Hi, my name's Ariel. I am nine years old. I live in Hertfordshire. Here are today's two truths and a lie. Number one, Jerusalem is holy not only to Jews, but to Christians and Muslims too. Number two, archaeologists have found clay pots and other objects in Jerusalem with names written on them in Hebrew. Some of these names are the same as names found in the Bible. Number three, Jerusalem is the oldest city in the world. Good luck. I hope you figure out the answer. Thanks. Ooh, that's a puzzler. I can't wait to find out which one's the truth and which one's the lie and what's under cabin 31. And if Mud Boy is real, so many mysteries. I just got word that Sam is in place. Let's cut to Sam on the scene at cabin 31. This is Sam, your roving reporter, coming to you live from Cabin 31. And wow, it looks like a big construction site over here. I'm here with the head of construction, Netta Asner Minster. I'm happy to take a break from supervising all this digging to chat with you, Sam. So tell me exactly, how long would it take for someone to take all the way to Israel? Um, I'm pretty sure that's not possible. We're not digging to find a shortcut across the earth. We're digging to find relics that may have been buried on this spot. You see, I'm not just supervising this dig project. I'm also a Jewish educator who specializes in guiding people on their Jewish journey and in many cases, conversion to Judaism. Can you explain what you do? I basically teach Judaism, Hebrew, and also Jewish history online to people from all over the world. Was it your dream to become a Jewish educator? It wasn't my dream when I was growing up, but I actually wanted to be a teacher. When I actually walked into a classroom, I realized that wasn't for me. So I'm very happy that I found a way to teach in a way that it is beautiful, inspiring, and meaningful for me. The most interesting and inspiring experience I've had doing this is the fact that my own husband did an Orthodox conversion to Judaism. 
So that exposure really taught me also about this process, but how beautiful a Jewish journey can be for any person, including myself. It's Jerusalem Day here at camp. And I'm wondering if you can tell us how old Jerusalem actually is. We don't know for sure how old Jerusalem is, but we have found archaeological evidence that points to the fact that there are people living in Jerusalem as old as minus 3,000 years. So that is very old. It's important to also say that Jerusalem is not the oldest city in Israel. There have been archaeological findings in places such as Jericho, Megiddo, or Jaffa, as well as mentions and records of ancient civilizations that point to the fact that people lived there and they settled in different places before Jerusalem also. Have items been found in Jerusalem that help tell us how old Jerusalem is? Yes, definitely. So first of all, we have the Western Wall itself, the Kotel from the Second Temple period, showing that the Jewish people were not only living in Jerusalem, but that the temple was actually around as a center for Jewish life, which we read about in the Torah. Besides that, there also have been a lot of seals that were found from the First Temple period that had also names of Judean kings in Hebrew. And we also have the City of David, which is located right near the Western Wall. A lot of places have been found pointing to the presence of Jewish people in Jerusalem even before the First Temple period. There is an impressive tunnel layout called Hezekiah's Tunnel that experts say directed water within the city walls of Jerusalem. It's believed that this system helped get water when the city was under siege, which means that people were stuck only within the city, that they could not leave. Has anything cool been found? Like treasure? One cool thing that you could say is like treasure was called Ketef Hinom, which was found just 40 years ago. It's a treasure, you could say, that's a small scroll, which was found containing the blessing of the Kohanim, the priests, which you all might know because it's also part of the blessing parents say to their kids every Friday night. This is the oldest biblical text ever found, which dates to the late 7th century and to the early 6th century, more or less. Why is the land of Israel so important to Jews in Judaism? So the land of Israel is so important to Jews in Judaism because in the Torah, in our you know holy book, um, the land of Israel was promised to the Jewish people by God, by Hashem. And for 40 years, the Jewish people, the people of Israel, walked through the desert to get to the land of Israel, where they actually lived for many years. And even when the Jewish people were actually exiled after the destruction of the temples, we always thought of Israel, of Jerusalem, remembering it and mentioning it in our prayers. And even to this day, we sing next year in Jerusalem at the end of our Passover Seder and Yom Kippur. And now we actually have the state of Israel and we're able to go there and visit. How did Jerusalem become important to so many different cultures and religions? So Jerusalem became important to so many different cultures and religions because throughout history, different nations and religions have actually lived in Israel. Um, Babylonians, Roman, Islamic, Crusaders, and more. So because of this, various leaders and events and occurrences have actually happened in Jerusalem, making it an important and central location. For Christians and Muslims, holy and special events actually have happened in Jerusalem, making it also an important place for these religions. Can you tell us the most joyful part of your job? So the most joyful part of my job is sharing the beauty of Judaism in Israel, seeing people's face light up and share the incredible experience that they've had by celebrating a holiday or doing some mitzvah or learning something new or even just baking challah. My last question. Can you tell us a joke? Sure. Why was the archaeologist always tired in Jerusalem? Because every time he dug a little deeper, he'd find yet another layer. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today, Netta. I better let you get back to your digging. Thank you so much. It was so lovely speaking to you, Sam. Back to the studio. Thank you. Wow, such fascinating stuff. It almost makes me want to bury something so kids in the future will find it and wonder what we were like. Wait a minute, I'm getting a text from Sam. Turns out what they found in Cabin 31 is exactly that, a time capsule. It seems that campers long ago buried some items that they thought would have meaning for us campers today. That is so cool. 
You know, I think it would be really fun to create our own time capsule. Like, gather up some things that we want to leave for campers that come after us. Like maybe our own kids or grandkids. My grandma was actually in cabin 31 when she was a camper. I found her name on the wall plaque when I was there. Hey, that gives me an idea for today's Kesher question. Kesher, the Hebrew word for connection and a fun way to connect with kids all over. What is something you have that is meaningful to you and what makes it meaningful? My name is Matia and I live in Israel in Be'er Sheva. So something that's really important to me is something that is called in Hebrew Tikkun Olam, which is basically correcting or changing the world for good. And Tikkun Olam is based, it's just, it's doing what you think is best, even if you have to sacrifice something of yourself or of your time or of your experiences. And it's really tough, but it's really important to me that I do it, even if it's just picking up a piece of trash from the floor and I could just be walking the other way, or if it's trying to close or make the rift smaller between two people who are disagreeing about things that don't make a lot of sense. Hello, my name's Akiva. I'm 14 and I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, something that's meaningful to me is my um, mezuzah necklace. It's something that my great-grandpa used to have and it was one of his most important possessions. Um, and he gave it to my great-grandma to give to me before he passed away on my bar mitzvah. I wear it almost every day of my life, except for times when I'm worried I would lose it. Um, and it's it's something so important to me and it's always um, around my neck when I can and it makes me feel safe and it's something that I would definitely pass down to my children or my great-grandchildren or my grandchildren so they could have the same type of feeling. Hi, I'm Anna, I'm 14 and I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Hi, I'm Adina, I'm 14 and I'm from Beechwood, Ohio. My great-grandmother's, I think, she left me and my sister a tea set like with teacups and saucers and like a teapot and it's really beautiful. It's pink and it's white and it's all porcelain um, and I'm always afraid to touch it but it's really beautiful and that's a grandmother I got my, my namesake from so it's really special to me. I have a mezuzah that I got in Israel and it's a car mezuzah so it's like really tiny and I just saw it I was like this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen and I really want it and I have it like on my bed because I have a loft bed so it goes like underneath my bed like a little area so it's not an actual room but it feels like a special room. Such great ideas to help tell our stories. We can leave relics behind to let the future us know what was important to present us and what our life was like. It's like finding a secret treasure from long ago. Ooh. Because Israel has been around for so long, we can find stuff that tells us stories of life in historic times and find evidence of long-lasting traditions that are celebrated even today by Jews around the world. Sounds kind of like camp. We have so many stories and traditions here too, like Omanut, where we make arts and crafts, and where I found this really awesome container that will make a perfect time capsule, and these really cool beads so I can make friendship bracelets to put in. Neat! I wish I knew how to make a time capsule. That sounds like a great time to introduce our next segment, Futzin' Around. Let's cut to Fox, who's in arts and crafts room today. Fox, what are you futzing around with today? Kia ora to my podcasting buddies. This is Fox from New Zealand, back in the Camp Sababa Arts and Crafts Room. It's the perfect place to make our special craft, a time capsule. And we can do it in just four easy steps. Step one, you can't make a time capsule if you don't know what you're going to put in it. Think about what sort of message you want to send into the future. Is it about a special time in your life, like being at camp? or something important about yourself, like a favorite hobby. Step two, get those items together. What will best represent the idea you thought of in part one? If you can't find an item you'd want to part with, you could draw a picture, write a story, or cut something out of a magazine. Step three, find a container. Make sure it's something airtight, like a food container or a jar with a twist on lid. Remember, you'll be keeping your items safe from the elements. Step four, this is the fun part. You'll have to hide the time capsule. You can put it in a secret place, bury it, or give it to a grown-up to hide. After that, you can leave it for someone in the future to find, or you could even open it yourself after a few years to remember what your life was like right now. Happy time capsuling! Back to the team in the studio! Wow! Thanks, Fox! Those were some great directions. I already wrote a note to put in my time capsule for future campers. It says, if Mudboy is real, tell everyone that Eli knew it all along. 
I finished my friendship bracelets, but I couldn't decide which one to put in my time capsule, so I put them all in. I decided to fill my time capsule with pretty leaves and flower petals that I dried myself. Who knows, maybe they won't have those flower petals and leaves in the future. As long as it's important to you, that's all that matters. The whole idea is to let the Cancer Baba kids of the future get a little glimpse into who we are. And who we are is Mud Boy Finders, but also just some super cool Jewish kids with their own podcast. Maybe kids in the future will listen to it. Like a time capsule for your own ears. Gosh, there's so much history all around us. If we know where to look from Jerusalem to right here under our feet. It makes me feel like I have a connection to all those Jewish people from our summer camp. And even to the ones from thousands of years ago. And if we all feel the same connection to our past, that makes us connected to each other too. That's awesome! It's sort of like our podcast. We may not be in the same room or even at the same camp as everyone else, but we still get to feel a link of other Jewish kids from all different places with all sorts of different backgrounds. Thanks for connecting with us, listeners. And now, here are the Mutter Boys to play us off. And don't forget to listen out for the answers to Two Truths and a Lie. This is Jake from the camp band, the Mutter Boys. Today's track is all about the breath of life and our connection to the land of Israel. It's called Kol Ha Nishama. to two truths and a lie. If you were listening closely, you heard that one. While Jerusalem is a holy city for Jews, it's true that it is also holy for others too. And number two is true. They have found lots of clay items with names on from the Bible. Cool. You also heard that Jericho, which is in Israel too, by the way, is the oldest known city in the world, according to today's archaeology. So number three was a lie. Jerusalem is very old, though. Thanks so much to all of you for making our audio dreams come true. Remember, tune in next time to laugh, learn and live with us, your favourite host on the Camp Sababa podcast. Bye for now. If you love this episode, send your feedback to kids at opendoormedia.org. And don't forget to rate, subscribe and share. Thanks so much to everyone who helped to make our podcast. Our hosts, whose real names are... Maya, Nina and Dean. Our roving reporter, Sam. Made in this episode by Esther. Our activity director, Fox. Played by Fox. Our interview guest... Netta Asna Minster. This week's Kesha Kids... Matia, Akiva, Anna, Adina. Our show was produced and directed by Gemma Last and written by Gemma Last, Joe Hennis and Fran Greenman-Schmitz. Our executive producer is Fran Greenman-Schmitz. Ben Kelly at Soho Sonic is our audio engineer and sound designer. Credits read by John Last and Poppy. That's me. Created for Open Door Media with support from the Jim Joseph Foundation Maimonides Fund and Natan Fund. Tune in next time to our amazing podcast.